Is the real estate market in a bubble? This is the question I'm being asked seemingly every day by people just like you. And on the surface, this appears to be a very legitimate question. Hello everybody, it's your friend Wade Perry of the Perry Properties Group at Lux Denver, where we are working with neighbors and creating community. And today, we are going to share a few minutes with you addressing this very real concern. The pandemic has ushered in all sorts of new normals. Scarcity has produced a perceived increase in demand in many areas of our lives. One need not look further than the toilet paper aisle at the grocery store or getting a reservation at a restaurant in order to feel like the demand for certain items has been skyrocketing. Well, the real estate market has fallen into this category too. With the number of homes available for sale having declined significantly over the past year and mortgage rates reaching historic lows, the activity in the marketplace has reached a fever pitch, with many properties receiving multiple offers and purchase prices higher than list price. This has prompted many people to approach me with the simple question, are we in a real estate bubble? Or they might say, the last time it felt like this, the market crashed. And it is more than understandable why one might feel this way. To arrive at the answer, we need to define what creates a bubble and then overlay that definition on the realities of our market today, as well as the last time we were actually in a bubble. A good rule to remember as we go through this is the rule of supply and demand. When demand outpaces supply, prices rise. And when supply outpaces demand, prices decline or slow their rate of uh, appreciation. Therefore, a bubble in most markets is created when a period of unrealistically high demand, created by unsustainable circumstances, is followed by a period of oversupply. Let's look at a picture showing supply and demand in the Denver real estate market. Here we are showing the number of homes which are active or available for sale in the Denver market measured monthly in the blue line going back to 2012. The number of homes under contract are in red and the number of homes sold are represented by the green line. <clears throat> As you can see, the blue line was trending away from the green line for the past five years ended in mid 2020. Just as a reminder, supply, blue, increases its separation from demand, green, price appreciation will slow or prices could even decline. At first glance, this appears like a bubble could be forming. And now for the rest of the story. While the picture we just reviewed tells a story, it does not give us much perspective. Let's look at this next picture to see the whole story. This is the same picture, except that we are now going back to 2005. This picture very clearly shows the bubble of 2005 through 2008. During those years, we had the inventory of homes for sale rise to over 30,000. This begs the question, how did inventory get to be three times the average? The answer is that in the early 2000s, the mortgage industry had extremely relaxed standards for lending. This led to many people being qualified for loans who would not likely qualify today. This led to unrealistically and unsustainably high levels of demand. In addition, many of these buyers used an interest-only mortgage, which is not a bad way to go if you understand the potential pitfalls when the interest-only period ends. This abnormal demand drove up prices until the interest only period ended. That is when many owners were informed that their payment would adjust to the new market rate and their payment would include principal, resulting in a payment that was sometimes double what they were used to paying. This prompted many of the buyers from 2002 to 2005 to become sellers in 2005 to 2008. Many of us remember the foreclosure, short sale, bankruptcy plagued housing crisis of those years. 
Much of this was caused by relaxed lending standards. Today, lending standards are significantly more stringent. And this brings us to present day when inventory is down to just 2751. And the blue line is actually below the green line. This last picture clearly demonstrates the relationship between supply and prices. We are showing the annual price change by percentage. As you can see, the average sale price in the Denver market declined 26% from peak to trough when supply was at its highest in the 2005 to 2008 period. This is a great example of how massive supply with lack of demand drives prices down. Conversely, from 2009 through February 2021, we have watched the number of homes available for sale decline 86%, and the average sale price has increased by 160%. Here are your key takeaways. In order for a real estate market to be in a bubble, we will need to have the number of homes available for sale to increase from its present level of 2751 to levels closer to what we saw in the 05 to 08 period. This would mean tens of thousands of people would want to leave the area by moving out of state. Well, the last I checked, Colorado and the greater Denver market are still very much a desirable place to live. Hopefully you will come away with a firm belief that our real estate market is not in a bubble. Barring unforeseeable catastrophic events, our market should continue to experience appreciation in the coming years. So what does this mean for you now? Well, if you have come to the realization that you would like a different home, a home which better meets your family's post-COVID new normal lifestyle, this would be an ideal time for you to consider making a move. If you have more questions or thoughts about this information, or if you would like me to cover other questions or topics in this format, please reach out to me by text at 720-320-2288 or by email to wade at perrypropertiesgroup.com. Again, this is Wade Perry of the Perry Properties Group of Lux Denver, where we are working with neighbors and creating community. It's a great life.